My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and for today's Everyday Office video, I'd like to demonstrate how to connect a spin button to a field in your Excel spreadsheet. So first, a little bit of context. I have a webinar coming up where I'm going to be talking about building various uh, types of visualizations, you know, building a dashboard, if you will, in your Excel spreadsheet, allowing people to change what they see in the different charts over time so that they get different pieces of information that are valid to them. Now, what does that mean in terms of the spin button? As you can see here on my spreadsheet, I have this running 30-day total where it takes what happened on the first, this $18,000 worth of sales, then adds it together with the second, adds in the $11,000 worth of sales, coming to $29,000 worth of sales on the second, and then on the next day it adds another $4,000, and on and on and on for the next 30 days. And we reach this peak 30 days later where we've added up to $98,500 in the previous 30 days. Now, if we have a 30-day running total and we reach a day that's past 30 days into the year, well then we're going to drop off those first few sales, right? That first $29,000 worth of sales goes away and so on the 4th our sales decrease, right? Our total sales for the previous 30 days are decreasing, then back up, then back down again. And so what we want to do is have a chart of the 30-day running total. You can see my calculation here where I'm adding up everything in the B column if the value in the A column is within 30 days of the current date. But where does the 30 days come from? You can see here I have this cell F1 referenced as a value that it's getting put into this function. So if I decided instead of a 30-day running total, I wanted a 60-day running total, I could simply click the up button and find a 60-day running total, a 90-day running total. And the benefit of this is that I don't really want my coworkers finding out what a 72-day running total is. I want the simplest possible way of getting between a 30-day, a 90-day, 120-day running total on the chart, as you can see. So to make this happen, instead of having them type values into cell F1, I instead want this little up-down button to increment by 30 in cell F1. So to make this happen, what we need is the Developer tab at the top of the screen. If you don't have one, simply go to the File tab, top left-hand corner, trace down to Options at the bottom of that menu, and on your Options panel, make sure that you choose Customize Ribbon over here on the left. When you get there, this Developer tab, as you can see, is currently checked for me. If it's not checked for you, make sure you mark it. I click OK, and now the Developer tab is at the top of my screen. Within the Developer Ribbon, there's this option to insert various different types of controls. It looks like a toolbox. And I use the button kind of regularly, but I don't really go over here to this option for the spin button nearly as frequently. The spin button, the whole purpose of the spin button is to have an up and a down related to a cell, but not necessarily going one at a time or anything along those lines. So here, if I choose the spin button form control, it then gives me a crosshairs to draw with. So I'll just go ahead and click and drag and draw my little spin button right there, maybe about that big. And when I let go, you can see that I've got, you know, a little up and down arrow. And you can always squish it down a little bit, whatever you want it to look like. Now let's assume that I wanted to do the exact same thing I did in cell F1 in cell E1. I need to go up here, right click on my spin button and tell it to format that control to go ahead and tell it what to do and how to do it. So I choose format control and it says, uh, what cell would you like to connect this with? With cell link right here. I would like to connect this to cell E1, just the same way that previously I did cell F1. Now what should be the base value the beginning value for cell E1. Let's say it will go 15 days at a time for this one. So the current value is 15, the minimum value is also 15, and let's say they go up by 15 at a time until they reach, uh, let's call it 180 days in the future. 
So minimum of 15, maximum of 180, going 15 days at a time. And automatically, cell E1 will be set to 15. So I hit OK. And as you can see, it says 15 now. The only thing I did here was I went ahead and centered that number right on top of the up and down arrows and maybe colored it a little bit so it looks nice. Okay, now right now I can go up and down, as you can see, by 15 at a time, but it's not really doing anything yet. So now I'm just going to go to my two functions here, the first one right here that says F1, and trade out F1 for E1. There we go. And the same thing here in this function, trade out F1 for... E1, and then fill that down. Okay, and so now as you can see, I have a 15 day running total column. After 15 days on uh, January 19th, you can see the previous running total decreases, then keeps going up, then it hits another dip, then it keeps going up, then it hits another dip, and on and on. And the chart over here says it's the running 15 day total. But if I hit the up arrow, now it's the 30 day total, etc. 45 days, 60 days. And you can see why that spinner button is so nice. Rather than having to manually change the number value in a given cell, we just say increment it by a certain amount and watch everything else adapt to that change.